Hey, I'm Tim Smith. I'm the worship pastor at Mars Hill Church in Seattle. Uh, for a question was, uh, what should a church planner be looking for in a worship leader or worship pastor? I would say, first of all, that they need to be a worshiper. You have to be a worshiper before you can ever be a worship leader. This means that God's glory is the deepest motivation in their heart. Uh, they have to be one that, that seeks to, to worship God in all of life before they can faithfully worship God in song. They need to be one that has an active prayer life, that is seeking, that has an appetite to see God glorified in everything before they can accurately join God's word with a musical context and lead others um, to respond in, in the same way. They have to be able to lead by example. Um, they also need to be one who loves the church. So much of worship, corporate worship, worship through song is uh, in, in the church today is, is uh, an experience as an end in itself, an experience that is done outside of the church. People want to experience uh, personally the Holy Spirit and they want to experience a, a, a corporate worship um, experience of one kind or another, but they, they usually want to do this outside of the church. And scripturally we see that, that you cannot properly worship Jesus apart from his bride, and you cannot properly be filled with the Spirit who creates the church, who's building all believers into a dwelling place for God by through his work uh, as the Holy Spirit. You, you can't be filled with the Spirit, you can't um, uh, rightly worship Jesus apart from the church. And that's not just the global church. The global church has to have its local expression of the church. And so you need folks that are going to be worshipers first and foremost, and then folks that will be deeply committed to building the church. Second question was, was what does a, a worship leader do? It, I hinted at it earlier. They really they join God's word in an appropriate context, a musical context, a creative context, a, a liturgy, an order of service, all moving towards magnifying the glory of Jesus. The purpose statement we use at Mars Hill is that uh, for corporate worship is to, to magnify the glory of Jesus in the hearts of the church that we lead with music and production. So God's glory is the first and foremost priority, and we use music and production not as an end in itself, but as a helpful tool to magnify the glory of Jesus um, through uh, the power of the Spirit. So they have to be one who can, can teach, who can lead, uh, who can accurately discern the truth of Scripture and then join that in an appropriate musical context for your particular people, place, and time so that the church is built up. Uh, do it in a cultural context. Uh, contextual way so that when outsiders and unbelievers enter it's not just a parallel universe that they're walking into that there's there's some touchstones to the world around and all of that being the goal that that hearts would be moved that in, in the deepest part of who we are we would be moved to glorify Jesus that we would be affected to reflect the glory of Jesus it says in 1 Corinthians 3 18 with unveiled face we behold the glory of Jesus and then we're transformed to look more and more like him. So, uh, man, I can't stress uh, hard enough the, how important it is to be a worshiper first. Do not bow to the temptation to simply import professionalized good musicians because you feel like you have to fill a need for quality and production. Get worshipers. Get uh, people who are committed to uh, growing the church, to investing in the bride of Christ and if they need to, to hone their musical chops, get them voice lessons. Um, you can work on those skills a lot more than you can work on that heart if it's not there.